Hey guys, subscribe for daily knife content. And if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another really interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the legendary Microtech Scarab 2. Uh, this is the newest version of the Scarab. The older Scarab uh, being, I would say, probably, I mean, like, arguably one of the most iconic OTFs ever. Uh, really expensive American made, which is definitely the case with this guy. Um, but it was a little bit smaller. Uh, I want to say it was about eight inches overall. It's definitely the knife that, um, like every Chinese company ever. And even to this day, like every OTF that's not microtech, like that's the one that is it, they're modeled after the lightning OTF is not a clone, but it's very similar to the profile. It's obviously trying to, right. This is the new one. This is big. This is more powerful, more robust. I will link this guy down below. At the time of this recording, they are difficult to find. But depending on when you're watching this video, they might be easier to find. So if you'd like to check out the links down below to see if it is, you're welcome to. I'll also link Microtech Knives in general so you can check out what they've got going on. This knife was sent to me by uh, Crickets, which is a name that I've come to really enjoy. And his Instagram is your new kid. So check him out. Definitely deserves a follow. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. It's also because of my generous patrons. You can check out my Patreon right down below. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's measure this guy. Big, big boy. I'm going to get this exactly right. Keep in mind you're viewing this like a domed kind of thing. So it's going to look like I'm not holding it exactly on, but I promise you I am. To the back of the handle, it is exactly nine inches. To the tip of the glass breaker, it is nine and a half inches. So there's an additional half an inch that is counted in length when you look it up on retailer sites, but that area is not grippable. That last half of an inch is the glass breaker. The blade, you could technically measure it at four inches. If you measure it to the middle of the handle from the tip, you're looking at 3.8 inches. Cutting edge is exactly, no, oh, hang on, let's make sure, yeah. The cutting edge is exactly 3.6 inches overall. Let's go ahead and do a size comparison up against their other current big boy, the Microtech Combat Troodon. These two are, even though my camera might not be capturing it exactly right, exactly the same length, exactly. The blade on the Scarab is definitely a little bit more robust, just a little bit out to the tip and the um, the stock thickness. The handle is substantially more robust. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, let's go ahead and do some more common size comparisons, right? How about up against the Ontario Rat 1 and the Ontario Rat 2? So you can see there, it is huge. Absolutely. Move these guys off to the side. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and Spyderco Para 3? Once again, gigantic. Not a super tall blade, right? It is thick, though, and it is big. And last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Mini Griptilian. So there you go. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check on this guy. Something that is fantastic with, uh, with this knife is unlike older variants of Microtech knives, is my exposure good? Yeah, I think it's fine. They don't use these proprietary tri-wing screws. You can get a tool for these. You gotta pay for it, right? It's not a common tool. This guy is just using the regular Torx, he uh, heads. So that's fantastic. I mean, I Truthfully, I'm probably not going to ever want to get into my OTFs, but there definitely are people out there who want to get into it or might have to. I mean, if you got something stuck in there and you can't send it back for one reason or another, you just don't want to. These are T8, by the way, which is great. You can get my tools right down in the description. They're very inexpensive and very recommendable. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, for people who want to get in there or have to get into there, um, you you can just use T8, right? I mean, if you've never been on the inside of a of an OTF before, they're definitely more complicated than a folding knife, but not crazy. It's not insane. It's not like taking apart your washing machine, which I had to do. I had to take apart the door assembly to the lock spring fit. 
Anyways, anybody who's done that knows it's a nightmare. That's not what we're looking at here. Uh, no, uh, if you need to, you can get in there with a Torx bit, and I think that's fantastic. Please, Microtech, I would love for you to translate that to your entire line. I like how the tri-wing screws look, but for just being practical, just this works. This is great. Okay, let's go ahead and do carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. Holy crap, this thing is freaking thick. It is a thick boy. No getting around that, right? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I think it's kind of cool. I honestly do. I kind of like that there's a charm there, right? I kind of like bricky knives. But, you know, we'll come at it. We'll come at it uh, with a practical sense, right? Uh, blade stock thickness on this guy. I think it's. I think we should also measure blade stock thickness on the combat Trodon so that we know definitively that it is different. Blade stock thickness on the combat Trodon, I believe, is 125 thousandths, and that is the case there, right? This guy, ah, 135. It's not that much more, right? It's not like insano thick, or maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Oh, oh, I am wrong. 156, probably 155 thousandths. Quite a bit thicker. Quite a bit. Not quite XM18 thickness, but thicker than I thought. I'm definitely being thrown off there. Uh, length and um, height up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here that this is longer than the PM2. What am I, why am I doing it this way? Longer than the PM2, right? Uh, and definitely the Para 3. Not as tall, even with the switch. I This is throwing me off. <laughs> even with the switch, not as tall, right? But way thicker, way thicker. So this is a, it's just, it's carrying, it, you're literally carrying a gigantic three-dimensional rectangle. Um, that's, that's what this is. Uh, now, your, uh, your frame here, I believe, is 60, 65. Periodically, I hear reports, for whatever reason, of some Microtechs coming in 70, 75. For example, my um, SOCOM Elite is apparently a weird run, a weird early run in 2018 that's in 70, 75. But some of them are in 60, 65. In fact, I think uh, that most of them are in 60, 65. What's the difference? I think 6065 is a little bit, it's not quite as strong, but it's more resistant to corrosion. 7075 is a little tougher, still pretty resistant. It doesn't really matter. I'm assuming this is 6065, but it might be 7075. How do you find out? I don't know. You probably have to call Microtech and ask them about your particular one, right? Your, the, the date that yours is made. I, I don't know. 5.5 ounces is what this guy's coming in at. That's pretty heavy, but not insane. It's only a little bit more than what the SOCOM Elite weighs, and the SOCOM Elite is around the same size of knife, right? Not crazy. What does the um, Combat Troodon weigh? More. <laughs> so there you go, right? Um, it's going to be too big for some people. It's going to be illegal for some people. Absolutely. It is what it is, right? Uh, it's an OTF. If you can't carry it, you can't carry it, right? So there's no use complaining about the weight. Um, but if you can carry it, uh, it's going to be heavier than uh, the average knife, right? But that much more? Eh, not really. I don't know. I think you're going to be comfortable in jeans. You're not going to be comfortable in, in fitted pants. And you're not going to be comfortable in athletic shorts. It's just the way it's going to be. Let's talk about the action. Holy crap. This thing fires hard. Now, the original uh, Scarab had two springs in there, and I guess the idea was that the additional spring uh, ensured that that blade always deployed. And I, I remember asking the Microtech rep, I said, is that like if one of the springs fails, the other one will be enough to, to push it out? And he was like, it's not necessarily like a backup. It's just extra power. If one spring breaks, right, then maybe the other spring will be enough to get it out. But he said, really, it's just the power of both springs at the same time pushing it, giving it a little bit extra, right? Now, that's not to say that the Combat Troodon and other uh, knives from Microtech don't fire hard. Um, the little tiny guys, like the UTX-75, the, the Exocet, and the Mini Troodon, those are noticeably less powerful than everything else, like a fraction of the power, right? But if we're talking about the Ultratech, uh, and honestly, the Troodon, 
the standard Troodon and even the UTX-85, they seem to be a little weaker. But if we're talking about the Ultratech, we're talking about the Combat Troodon, we're talking about the Direct Delta, right? Or the, these guys all fire pretty hard. Uh, it's it's very satisfying. There's noticeable recoil. I'm pretty, I'm certain the blade is going to deploy every single time unless something gets in there and slows it down. This guy, okay, the most powerful um, Microtech that I've handled up to this point has been the Combat Troodon. This guy is easily at least 20% more powerful than the Combat Troodon, and you can feel it, absolutely. Here's the interesting thing. This guy, when I hand this off to people who've never, because here's the thing. Non-knife people, the most impressive thing to them is a an OTF. Because everybody assumes these are legal and most people have never handled one, right? Not most knife people. Most non-knife people have never handled one. So I, I love watching my friends try and fire this for the first time. Because when they finally get it to deploy, they're like, oh my gosh, that is the craziest thing. I just had a buddy the other day, never handled one of these before, right? He loved it. But everybody, doesn't matter if it's my buddies from the gym or if it's, uh, you know, somebody who just doesn't have very strong hands. It doesn't matter. They all have a little bit of trouble with this guy because they push down and yeah, they're like, oh my gosh, it's so tight, right? They don't have that instinct to start down here and just push straight up. Once you have that, once you figure out the leverage point, it's fine. This guy, and I think it's because of the shape, this is much less aggressive than this way this is way less aggressive right this guy much more natural feeling and it's way wider uh right when i now my wife gets handed a lot of knives but she does not like this thing she has a lot of trouble deploying the, the uh combat throw it on this guy i handed it to her i said try go go for it deploy this didn't tell her anything else she got it immediately this is actually easier to deploy than the combat troodon. It's more comfortable to deploy. The funny thing is, is once you reach that event horizon where it's gonna throw the blade, the blade is actually thrown harder. You'd think the harder it is to push that switch up, the harder the blade's gonna fire, right? Not, not with this guy. This guy, it's just like, oh, it's just a nice, it's a stroll in the park and then you reach that event horizon and it's like, bam! It's, it, the blade just explodes out of the end, right? Awesome feeling. Definitely more powerful. People remember why I talked about uh, the uh, Recon 40 being the most powerful action I'd ever felt. So how does that compare with this guy? Truthfully, I think this is about on par with the Recon 40, which is a much less expensive American OTF, right? Part of that might have to do with the approach with the bearings underneath the switch, right? Which one's more satisfying? That's impossible to say. This guy's wider, thicker, more robust, right? got that scarab aesthetic this and the recon 40 feel about the same in terms of power um the recon 40 might still be a little bit smoother but some of that is made up for by the fact that this firing switch is so wide right so yeah that that's how i feel about that the action is wonderful the action itself is likely one of the main reasons that people will pick this up right a lot i mean like honestly guys my uh, my take on otfs is I don't understand the laws that restrict people from carrying them. I would argue that an OTF is actually safer than most folding knives because of the way that it operates. People look at it, they hear it, they see it, right? They And it's, oh, dangerous. Now, actually, I think OTFs are, are actually less dangerous than most common folding knives because of the way that the blade comes in and out of the handle. It just, that is, that just seems to be a safer way to deploy and retract a knife, right? It's totally safe inside of the handles. So, but anyways, yeah, most people are going to pick this up because it is an OTF, because it's aggressive, and because of the firing power and the, the legacy behind it, right? It's not a bad reason to pick it up. Some people will pick it up and will absolutely intend to use it, right, and take advantage of those utilitarian uh, benefits. That's also a good reason to pick it up. Let's go ahead and talk about the, um, you know, anatomy of this and the aesthetics. So this is, is, like I said, aluminum frame, and then they have these track tech inserts, which is kind of the thing with the scarab. A lot of you guys remember there was the QD scarab, which had the track tech inserts, and then there was the executive scarab, which had more of a smooth, right, I guess more businessy 
<laughs> more just more classy looking right this is like the aggressive tactical like uh, you know you got it between your teeth and you're swimming like under submarine to you know infiltrate you're carving into the submarine with your scarab i'm joking around uh but yeah that was uh this has the more tactical look and then the old one had the the executive version had the, the regular finish it would not surprise me if they eventually come out with an executive version right the executive one always costs a little bit less quite a bit less if I remember. I don't know why. It couldn't possibly cost that much to put these inserts in here, but they do, whatever. I'd like to see different inserts. It'd be cool to see, um, you know, I don't know. Microtech does their own thing, but it would be cool to see different materials that are laid in here. But this is a very specific aesthetic that comes with the Scarab. That's what people remember, right? So the way that it's laid in is perfect nothing awkward, nothing looks funky, it doesn't look trashy or anything. No, it's very well done. And it does provide meaningful traction considering you basically just have a big rectangle to hold on to. Are the ergonomics perfect? Definitely not. Do I have plenty of room to hold onto this knife and do I feel secure while I'm holding it? Absolutely. Even the firing button isn't that bad. I know people are gonna ask about that. Does the firing button have play? Is there play in the firing button? Yeah, a little bit. I don't, I don't know why people, I mean, like, it's weird to me, the thing that OTF people, like, I don't like detent lash, right? That bothers me. Some OTFs have play in the firing button. Some don't. This has got a little bit. My combat troodon has a little bit more, right? Um, I don't, honestly, like, I can understand why and some folding knives detent lash causing an issue over time, right? But play in the firing button I can understand why nitpicky people, such as myself, might get a little bit like, ugh, yeah, I wish it was solid. But is it gonna is it one of those things that's gonna cause a problem over time? No. I don't I don't get that. If your knife if your microtech has play in the firing button, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how most of them are. Um, but whatever, people are gonna nitpick what they're gonna nitpick, right? You're not gonna change my mind, but you're <laughs> you're welcome to try. That's what the comment section's for down there. Um, actually no, it's not <laughs> It's for leaving comments, but that's the area you go if you'd like to try and change my mind. Um, anyways, uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's all great. I can hold on to it, right? It's, I mean, like I give it a B minus, I guess, whatever that means on ergonomics. But for what it is, for what they, you know, had to accomplish considering the design here. Yeah, it does work. There's traction. Um, and the nice thing is, is for the most part, it won't fray up your pants because the pocket clip actually lays on a smooth part of the aluminum. It looks good. The edges are nicely knocked down. The seams meet up very, very well, which is nice. If you're going to have to do a seam construction like this, it's nice that everything meets up correctly. That's what you want to see. Sorry, the exposure is limiting us because this knife is very dark. There we go. Turn it up to the, it's at maximum. So I can't go any higher right now. But yeah, the way that the uh, heads are laid in, right, is fine. Everything looks good. No awkward or ugly gaps. The way that the pocket clip is fitted back here looks great. The new, uh, you know, scarab blade, how they do these fullers all the way down. I think it looks cool. They didn't need to do that, but it does give it the sort of new and upgraded look, right? What I really like is the fuller down the spine. I don't know why I like that so much, but I do. It really... <laughs> It really looks good. Is there an advantage to that? You know, maybe in and out. Does it minimize the amount of, de you know, that minimize the likeliness that some piece of debris is going to get wedged between the blade and the frame, right? I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. You can see there's a little fuller right there, too. Maybe it has something to do with carrying lubricant in and out, right? I mean, you could, maybe you can drop some lubricant in there and then fire it in and out. What kind of lubricant do you use? As far as I know, it's still the rem oil. You still want to dry lubricants. I think that's what they use at the factory, but I don't work for Microtech, so that may not be factual. That's what I've always used on mine, and it has never failed. Um, yeah, so that's pretty neat. Um, it looks like maybe you could just drop just a little tiny bit of lubricant over these fullers, and maybe, you know, some here and a tiny little bit at the back, and just open and close it a couple of times, and then it's just going to keep functioning. So maybe that is aesthetic and functional. It's just a guess. I could be totally wrong. In any case, it does look nice and it's done well. Something that Microtech still does on all of their knives is print this big freaking picture, you know, Microtech, whoa, USA Microtech Scarab 2 SE. 
right all in the middle of the blade. Why? I don't know. Because on this side, there's nothing and it looks really good, right? I would just, you know, Microtech, M390, USA, or maybe put USA on this side, right? Okay, it's there, whatever. It doesn't cause a disadvantage. I mean, it doesn't, it's not hurting anything functionally. It's just not the, they've just done that on everything, right? It's always like that. Edges, nicely knocked down. This area right here, just a teeny tiny bit sharp, but not crazy, right? Up here behind the swedge, same thing. Lots of different finishes eventually, I'm sure. As with the, you know, the case with the Comet Troodon, they do tumble, they do satin, they do apocalyptic, they do two-tone, they do the, the full DLC, right? There's a whole bunch of different, and, and then they do like bronze. I love that. I love it when they do bronze. I'll buy one of these if they do bronze, a bronze tumble blade with a, um, with a, with bronze hardware and a bronze switch. That'd be excellent. Um, yeah, what's the blade steel M390? Very good. I'm sure we'll see 204P and perhaps LMAX mixed in. I think they do that. They just use whatever they have at the moment. 204P is an analog to M390. Uh, LMAX is also great. I honestly, I wouldn't, I, I don't really care. Any, any of those is fine. Wouldn't surprise me if they start messing around with S45VN. I know for a long time they used S35VN. Um, yeah, I would, I would pick one of these up in S45VN as well. It's fine. Because I don't reduce the, the value of the knife to only the blade steel. People get bent out of shape with blade steel, right? If it's that much money, why is it only meant? Because the rest of the knife costs money to make. The rest of the knife is, it physically exists. <laughs> Obviously, I don't want to see 8CR 13 MOV on a freaking, you know, $500 knife. But, like, people get upset and they see S30V, S35VN. Like, the difference in cost between S35VN and M390 on the blade, like, the final say, is probably, like, 20 bucks. You know, so the rest of the knife is more so, you know, I, I, I'm just digging a hole right now. <laughs> I'm just lighting fires. The uh, final edge is not thin. I'm not going to say it's like insano thick, but it's what you'd expect. It's about the same as other large OTFs, right? I mean, it's going to cut. It's going to do the job. I love how the drop point looks in this for whatever reason. If I, you know... Like, my, my favorite blade that they do is the Hellhound. But normally, if I was not going to pick up a Hellhound blade, if I was going to go to Combat Truidon, for whatever reason, I'd pick the Double Edge. On this guy, they did do, a, I think, a few in Double Edge, if I'm not mistaken. But I think I'd rather just have the Drop Point blade in this. I think it looks good. Standard uh, Tumbled. This is what the Tumbled looks like. I imagine they'll do Satin and all those other things. Wouldn't surprise me if they did a Tanto. Wouldn't surprise me if they offered it in Hellhound at some point. Right? We just don't, we just haven't seen very much yet. Uh, but yeah, I think the blade shape's good. Is it going to get the job done? You bet. Absolutely. There's very little you can't do with this. For anybody who doesn't know, OTFs from Microtech are substantially more durable than you might expect. If you want proof of that, people are like, prove it, use your knives. Yeah, go to X-Ring's channel. He does it. He's done way more with these things, with Microtech OTFs and Microtech knives in general, that I have ever been able to do, Right. Um, he's proved it. So that's great. I'm glad that he does those kinds of things because then I don't have to, or people like me don't have to, right? We just get to talk about it. We get to do the easy part and that's fine. Cause this is what I enjoy doing. Yeah. Super durable. Um, so yeah, you really can take these things out and beat on them and use them hard as they are intended. They are not pocket jewelry. They're not just designed to look good. It is not just a gimmick to get people to buy something, but that's what people assume. It's generally the assumption of people who've never handled something like this, never used something like this. And I'm not going to be able to stop them from saying that down in the comment section, but yeah, absolutely. It feels durable. It feels powerful, right? Robust. Glass breaker is fine. I don't, I don't need a glass breaker, but it's part of the look, right? And it's not really hurting anything because it's not a big spike. It's just that little ball bearing there, and that's great. Um, you can get a rod in there and just turn it, which is great. I'm glad they did that versus this. This sucks. I'd use, to get my pocket clip adjusted, I had to use vice grips and a towel so I didn't mark it up. It worked out. It's fine, but being able to turn that with a rod or something is great. Pocket clip fitted or seated perfectly there on top. You can switch it around if you want to, which is great. Uh, and then this has the, I love that it has the Scarab logo on there. Absolutely love it. Uh, it says Scarab 2, serial number uh, 677. That's what you can use to find out, you know, the, exactly the materials and information on your particular knife. 
Uh, and then this was uh, birthed in um, <laughs> December of 2020. Um, so yeah, just a couple of months ago, USA, and then it says Microtech again on the pocket clip, which is unnecessary because if you're going to put it on the pocket clip, why does it have to be on the blade? It's fine. So big, and it's an OTF. It's going to be illegal for a, multiple reasons for a lot of people, right? Some people can legally own it and not legally carry it, right? Those kind of people still buy. Honestly, if I lived in an area where I could legally own an OTF but not carry it, would I still buy it? Yeah, because I just sometimes I just want to have it, right? So whatever your reason for picking it up, uh, it is big and it is thick. You're definitely going to notice that in the pocket. It's not going to be legal for everybody, right? Um, those are the main disadvantages to this. Everything else, though, as far as an OTF goes, I mean, this thing is powerful. It is satisfying. It makes the awesome OTF noise that you want it to make. The aesthetics of the blade are good. A little thick behind the edge. That's to be expected considering the blade stock. This is definitely intended to be their most robust, most capable OTF. And I think that they definitely accomplished that. Um, some people are going to like the aesthetics of the track tech inserts and some people aren't. Whatever, that's your own personal thing, right? For me, I kind of like it, but I feel like it just completes the look of the scarab. That's just what the scarab look, excuse me, looks like. So that's what I like, right? Uh, I don't like them billboarding everything, but whatever. Um, I think the fullers are a nice touch, and they might offer, you know, an easy way for the lubricant to go, you know, to slide across the surfaces. I love that they did the track, the uh, the torque screws instead of the tri wings, right? Pocket clip, by the way, is a little tiny bit of a build, but truthfully, guys, it's really not that bad. I'm not really feeling, the thing that I'm feeling the most is here, and then maybe the pocket clip, the rest of it's fine. It's just blocky, right? Uh, so what does this come in at? Blade HQ has it listed at the time of this recording out of stock at $512. Do I understand why this is Microtech's most expensive OTF? Definitely. This definitely feels coming from somebody who owns a hellhound combat troodon this is actually more expensive than this knife because the standard version of this isn't though the standard version of this is 400 should be 485 bucks i think do i understand why the scarab is the most expensive definitely does it feel like a 512 dollars knife not really not really how am i gauging that well chris reeve knives rekinder knives um, those are coming in at 425 bucks. Do I think that this knife is in the, roughly the same caliber as those knives? Yes, I do. I think the fit and finish is there, the overall quality, right? They use similar materials. Is the chassis that much more expensive? The automatic nature? I think it's more complicated, but does it feel that much more? No. I feel like I mean, like, you know, again, is there's not a lot, like the pillars of my argument are not super strong here. So there are some people out there who will go, it's Microtech, Microtech's overpriced. Ah! They just, they, you can't, you know, they, they won't give you any context to it. They'll just say over, overpriced. My gut feeling is that this feels 450-ish, 475-ish, not that far. A lot of people who are looking at knives that cost 450 bucks, are they going to shy away from 512? No. So it's kind of a totally unnecessary thing. This is, I'll say this, this is Microtech's highest quality production OTF, and it feels that way. Um, so despite the fact that I think it might be just a tad bit overpriced, I personally would still pick this up. And honestly, I probably will. It's that cool. It just is. I might wait for the executive version. If tomorrow I looked in on a, one of the retailer sites, there was an executive one with a bronze blade. Honestly, if it was this right now, bronze blade, bronze firing switch, bronze hardware, bronze glass breaker, right? And it was whatever steel because I really don't care. Microtech uses great stuff. And they wanted 512 bucks for it. Would I pick it up? Yeah. Now, um, now, by the way, I'm not saying factually there will be an executive version of this. I think in a perfect world, we'd get an executive version that was a little bit less expensive, 450 or something like that. I think maybe that might make a little bit more sense. But if it doesn't come out and this is the only one, the only variant that is available, right? am I, am I going to go for it? Yeah, personally, I probably will. Um, I think this is really, really cool. Um, but it's not going to be for everybody. It's not going to make sense for everybody. 
Do you need a gigantic, robust, powerful OTF like this? No. Some people might find it more advantageous or use it more for what it was designed for than others, but do you have to be those people to buy it? No, because it's your money. Buy what you want and use it. Do with it whatever you, you know, I mean, do do legal things. Don't do illegal things, right? But if you just want to sit on your couch and enjoy it and love it, great. If you want to take it out and beat the crap out of it, take it out and beat the crap out of it. You bought it. You do what you want with it. Um, this is great. I love it. I, I would, I personally will spend the money on it, even though I think it's probably a little bit overpriced, but it's not bad. Very cool. This was a, this was a joy. I, I was so excited. This was one of the most exciting knives in the last few months on this channel. And I, I was just pumped. So anyways, thank you so much to Ah Crickets for sending this in. Check him out, uh, on Instagram at your new kid. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Like I said, check out the listing for this guy. And check out uh, Microtech Knives in general, which would be the first two links right down below. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.